What's going on guys? Welcome back to DM Garage. I have this uh, 2004 Toyota Highlander. I'll be doing an axle and also a motor mount. So check this out. So last time it was here that I did the bow cover gaskets, I did an inspection and found, you see the, all the grease leaking from the CV boot. Okay, it's completely torn. And it's also making a clicking noise when turning. See, it's completely out of grease inside, okay. And this one, too, but right there, you can see it right there. So I'll show you guys a better picture once, uh, once I have it out. That way I can uh, show you guys the new one and also the old one. All right, so right now I'm just gonna remove this bolt right here. This, it's a bolt and a nut. Okay, I'm gonna remove the wheel speed sensor, okay. And also I move the tie rod in okay that way if I remove the tie rod in it's gonna allow me it's gonna allow the hub to go forward and it's gonna give more room to remove the axle okay let's get to work this one it just held it to the strut by this clips right here okay all you got to do is just kind of pull on it and it'll, it'll come off the strut. You see, this is your, your wheel speed sensor right here. And then I also removed this, uh, this 12 millimeter. You gotta remember that the hub is gonna go forward, so you want, uh, you don't wanna stretch the brake line, okay? Or this brake hose. All right, so there is a cotter pin that goes through this uh, tie rod in. All you gotta do is use some pliers or like mine, I, I was able to use the fingers and just take this, this nut off right here, okay? You remove this nut and you're gonna have to hit here to pry, to kind of lose the tie rod in. All right guys, so make sure you wear some something for your ears because it does get pretty loud so i bought this uh harbor freight okay and then another tip real important that you leave the nut okay because if you don't leave the nut uh right here if you miss you, you're gonna hit the nut right so if you miss hitting it with the hammer what's gonna happen is that you're gonna if you're trying to hit here but if you miss you're gonna hit here okay you can break the tie rod in or you're gonna strip it okay and now you gotta worry about fixing the threads okay so in this case if you leave the nut you can have more of a safety that if you miss you only hit the nut you don't have to be repairing the threads or anything okay so you just move it up okay Boom. just move it aside and that's it Okay, so you wanna take the tie rod in um, before even taking this, because right now it's pretty much all the tension is gonna be here. Once you start hitting it, everything's hard here, okay? So if you start taking out everything loose here, it's gonna be a lot harder to remove your tie rod in, okay? 
22 here and a 22 but instead of using another socket what i like to use i like to use a wrench okay just like so So I use the 32 here, okay? 32, boom, ready to go. Okay, so right now, the only thing holding this hub right now is from going forward is the bolt here, okay? I always leave a bolt and once I'm ready, then I take it off. What I like to do is I kinda, I, I hit on the, on the axle here, I tap it, and then what it starts doing, it starts backing up, okay? If it's not, if it's not uh, rusted in here, okay? So once I start hitting it here, it's gonna start pushing back. Once I remove it completely, what I like to do is I like to hang it. That way I don't stress uh, the brake hose, okay? And then, so if you see you're not stressing the brake, the brake hose, then you're okay. But if you see it goes too much forward, then you're gonna be stressing out the ball joint at the bottom, and then also your brake hose, okay? So let's see what this vehicle is going to do. Okay, you see like right here, it's tilting forward, but it's not tilting enough, like too much to harm this brake line, okay? There's not even, there's no tension here whatsoever, okay? All right, so now I gotta do is just use my pry bar and then uh, remove the axle from the inside. I'm gonna have to be quick because it's leaking ATF. All right guys, check this out. So as soon as I removed it, the axle came apart. This is how worn out and bad this, this axle was. Look at this. All right, so let me let me put the other one on because I don't want it to lose too much uh, uh, transmission fluid. Okay. All you gotta do is just push it in and it'll go in, all right? And then right here, all you gotta do is just kind of give it some angle. All right, and start guiding it. Okay. okay. Once you see it go through, you just put your, your axle nut so it doesn't keep going back out. All right, and this one, the strut, it turns, okay? So you can adjust it. Okay, this one, you kind of have to wrestle it a little bit. Okay, what you gotta do is just line it up but it gets heavy because you have the axle and now you have this, you're trying to line it up in there.
have the new axle. I wanted to show you guys side by side, the two axles, but since it started dripping, uh, started dripping ATF, right? Uh, once you remove it, it's not that I damaged the seal, it's just the position of, of uh, how the axle sits inside. So you can see it, the, the, the ATF level rises above uh, where the axle goes, so that's why it starts to leak, okay? So I couldn't show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison, but you guys get the idea, okay? All right, so as you guys seen, it's all, I only removed the tie rod end, the bolts that go through the strut, okay? And then the one right here for the brake line, or the brake hose, I should say, okay? And this right here, this is the vehicle uh, speed sensor. So right here is the 10 millimeter. Okay, and everything else is ready to go. All right, so it's really important that you guys clean where the ATF was leaking for two reasons. Uh, one is gonna accumulate residue, and two, you're not gonna tell if the axle seal is actually leaking. All right, so the other thing left is to install the tire and to top off the ATF. Type T-4, okay? And then there's your hot mark right there, and then that's your cold, okay? So this vehicle is pretty hot, so right now it's, uh, after topping off, I left it at the uh, groove for the hot, okay? So it depends on your vehicle, if your vehicle is cold, and obviously you're gonna go based on this uh, cool mark at the bottom. But since my vehicle is hot, Obviously, I have to line it up with the, the top groove where it says hot, okay? So again, this is your fluid right here, type T-4, okay? All right, guys, so this is the motor mount right here that I'm doing. Uh, you can't really see it here, but in this angle right there. So right here, there you go, you can see a little bit, but it's, it's kind of cracked right there, right where the light's at. Okay, so right here, you can kind of see it, but I can't, I can't show you guys in this angle, but it's cracked pretty bad there and also on this side, okay? So this one, pretty straightforward, just removing the bolt here and the one here, okay? That's it. So it has one, two, and three bolts, okay? And all right, so I'm gonna use a piece of wood just to kind of keep the engine in its original position once I start removing uh, the motor mount. All right, so it looks like they're all 14, 14 millimeters. Okay, yep, sure enough, the 14. Another successful repair on this Toyota Highlander. All right, so this is the the part uh, that goes into the transmission. So as soon as I try to remove the axle, it just came apart. Okay, so this is the motor mount as well. You can kind of see right here. Once you're running the vehicle and you're checking for the mounts, so you can, you'll see this one. It would lift a lot. All right. Thank you guys for watching another video. Hopefully you guys find this video helpful and you guys give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because that will help me out a lot. Thank you guys. Have a good day.